Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to our show live here today just for you guys inshallah i hope everyone has been staying safe and did you have a nice little break there as well well we're glad you came back right as i promised before we've got the monthly competition in store for you today now what is the prize this is the prize it's called the muslim all-stars book Woo! written by myself it's one of my books i've got to admit it's one of my books and uh this book uh we did our first Mm, story back in oh when was it 2012 and since then I thought you know what it was a smallish book but I thought you know what it needs to be a lot bigger so that's why I've produced uh, a copy much bigger different story entirely fantastic artwork by a very talented brother from Malaysia I didn't do the drawing this time I thought give it to somebody else I can't take it I'm doing all the writing doing all the design so I couldn't take it anymore so I thought I'd get somebody else to do illustration and he's done an absolutely fantastic job so you will win one of these today if you can answer our very simple question now last week if you were watching last week you kind of know what I'm gonna say right oh but if you didn't uh, or if you missed it or if it was too quick for you or whatever the case is you've not sent your answers in just yet I'm gonna show you a video okay and you must enable in order to answer the question to get the book right you must watch the video, check everything out, and then I'm gonna ask you a question, and that is gonna be the competition, whether you can answer the question, okay? Well, I'll say the question now, obviously, I'll say afterwards, obviously, right? So check out this short video. You must pay close attention to it. Make sure you read as much as you can. Oh, uh, and then afterwards, I'll ask the question, and I'll send you the, give you the email address to send your answers. Are you ready, guys? Are you, okay, remember, March, Get set and play that video! See, oh, you're probably thinking, oh, clearly it was so quick. I was supposed to read that. Oh, hell, that's part of the challenge. You want it to be that easy. It's never going to be that easy. And we are going to push you guys and challenge you guys. Right, so the, what is the question? While the information is still fresh in your mind, what is the qu question in order for you to win a copy of that very exciting book? Well, all you have to do is send the answer to this question on tmks.club at gmail.com. <laughs> You're saying, Kelly, I'll just answer the question while I remember. Ah! Right, the question is this. I want you to name all of the Muslim all-stars. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, whatever it is, right? I want you to name, if I show you this, that doesn't really help. <laughs> but if I did that, got the names on the back, it might help, but it's too fast for you guys. <laughs> don't say I didn't show you the answer. I did show you the answer. Maybe you can freeze the frame <laughs> or whatever. But all you have to do is email the answer to that question. Slim All Stars. Remember, send that email to tmks.club at gmail.com. Come, should I say it again? Should we play that video again? No, no, maybe a little bit later on if you want to get a hold of one of these copies. And I, said, I, I need to remind you guys that this is um, a bit, bit older for, than the Muslim Family Current book. This, I'd say, is from about maybe seven, eight to about 13 years of age, okay? I wrote this book in order to show kids that you can do good in the community without fighting, without too much conflict and stuff like that as well. You can deal with issues in your community in a peaceful, cooperative way because they have to deal and they have to work with other faith communities. So they're working with Sikhs, they're working with Christians, they're working with Jews, they're working with all different
different types of people to resolve a problem in their community. As you saw on that short video, if you remember, it says now they have to face the monsters. Who are the monsters? Ooh. Hmm. They're not real life monsters, are they? No. So who are these monsters, right? So it's a bit of a challenge for them. And of course, it's going to be a bit of a challenge for you to answer that question, right? So maybe a little bit later on, we'll, um, we'll play that video and do the competition again. It depends how I feel, you know what I mean? Depends which way the wind is blowing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, as I mentioned before, today's overall theme is space. But have you ever thought to yourself, what is out there? And well, how big is space? Because every time you watch these science fiction films, they're talking about 20 light years, 70,000 light years, how big the sun is compared to the earth, how far this is, how far. It's pretty big out there. It's a bit bigger than your bedroom. I'm guaranteeing that, right? It's a bit bigger than my bedroom as well. But how big is space? Can you measure it with a tape measure? Mm, is a tape measure long enough? I don't know. But we've got a video that might, mm, it might answer some of those questions. And then again, it might not. But whatever the case is, guys, I wait to check out this video. It's about how big is the universe. Let's see it now, inshallah. The Muslim Kids Show. Hello and welcome to the Muslim Kids Show. How big is the universe compared to a grain of sand? You'll never get your head round just how big the universe is. Don't even try. It's vast. It's enormous. There isn't a single human mind, I reckon, that could actually comprehend the true immensity of the universe. We're happy with the size of an elephant, or the size of a tree, or maybe even the size of the Prophet's mosque. But if we go beyond that, it becomes quite simply way too difficult for our brains to comprehend. But this hasn't stopped astronomers endeavouring to measure the distance to the stars, however. One technique is to use a phenomenon called parallax. Everybody can actually experience parallax for themselves. If you hold your thumb up and close one eye, you can see that your thumb appears to be in a certain position relative to something behind your thumb. But then, if you open that eye and close the other eye, you'll see your thumb appears to move relative to the object behind. The same thing happens when we look at the stars. When we look at a relatively nearby star from the Earth, it appears in a certain position relative to the other background stars. Six months later, when the Earth is on the opposite side of the Sun, the same star will appear in a different position relative to the background, like opening and closing one eye then the other. And by measuring this apparent movement, we can calculate the true position of the star. An alternative method of measuring is to use certain stars in the sky that we know as standard candles. We know exactly how brightly they shine and we can then therefore measure how bright they appear to us on Earth and we can calculate how far away they are. The dimmer they appear, the further they are away from the Earth. So, the nearest star to the Sun is Proxima Centura. And that, it turns out, is 40 trillion kilometres away. That's 40 million million kilometres away from the Earth. Such numbers start to become incomprehensible. And that's why astronomers have adopted an alternative unit of measurement for such vast differences. The light year. A light year is the distance that light will travel in one year. If you imagine light moving around the Earth in one second, so in that time, light will travel around the Earth seven times, so that's fast. Speed of light is 300,000 kilometers a second. So one light year is about nine million million kilometers. The speed of light also leads to a curious question when we stare at the stars. So, the light from the Sun takes eight minutes to get to the Earth. That essentially means we're looking into the past. 
we're looking back at the sun as it was eight minutes ago. So, if the sun was to disappear right now, we wouldn't know for eight minutes. So a telescope, if you like, is a time machine. We're looking back in time, and the further the object is away from us, the further back in time we're seeing it. Our sun, like nearly all of the stars that we can see with the naked eye, sits inside the galaxy that we call the Milky Way. But our galaxy is not alone in the universe. Not everything that you can see in the night sky is actually in our galaxy. It turns out that some of those faint dots are in fact other galaxies. The furthest object that you can see actually with the unaided eye is another galaxy called Andromeda. The light from that galaxy has taken something like two and a quarter million years to get to Earth. So imagine if we reverse the scenario and you're looking at the Earth from Andromeda with a very powerful telescope, you'd see no signs of cities, no civilization, no Great Wall of China. You might be lucky enough to see one or two sorts of early humans hunting around on the African plains for their dinner, maybe. Astronomers have always wanted to see further using bigger and better telescopes to try and find out just how many other galaxies there are out there. Until finally, we pointed the Hubble telescope to what at first appeared to be a very dark and ordinary patch of the night sky. If you imagine holding up your finger with a grain of sand on it and then Looking at the patch of sky that the grain of sand blocks out, that's the field that the telescope zoomed in on. And what the telescope saw was incredible. Every single speck of light in this photo is a galaxy. 10,000 galaxies in a patch of sky the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length. If this tiny patch of sky is like every other, we can calculate how many galaxies are out there. The visible universe contains around 100 billion galaxies. Each one of those galaxies contains around 100 billion stars. That means that the visible universe contains something like 10,000 million, million, million stars. That means there are more stars in the visible universe than there are grains of sand here on Earth. The light from some of those most distant galaxies has taken around 13 billion years to get here. That's like travelling 300,000 kilometres a second. The visible universe stretches around 13 billion light years from the Earth. So, we've said that the universe is big. I'm going to try and give you some idea of just how big it is. Imagine the... ...the Prophet's Mosque. So now, when we take the Milky Way galaxy and shrink it down to the size of a grain of sand, the Mosque would be the entire visible universe. The universe is big. It's really big. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the size of the universe today. Until next time, goodbye. Big or what? Some of those numbers and some of those facts he was throwing out are truly mind-blowing. And when he talks about that thumb thing, I actually we tried it in the studio, holding your thumb up at an object and then switching your eye around, and then how they use that same parallax technique to find the distance between different stars and different planets that are thousands and billions of miles away. I, I tried it, and it's really awesome. I hope you guys tried it as well. So many planets. He said, more planets. If I remember correctly, more planets than there are grains of sand on Earth. And if you've ever been to a beach, one grain of sand, did you see that grain of sand on his finger? One grain of sand. There's more stars than grains of sand on the entire planet. The only thing you can say to that is Allahu Akbar. <laughs>
truly, truly mind-blowing. As I said, I don't think, uh, I'll go back on my previous statement. Can you actually measure it with a tape measure? Probably not. I don't think there's a tape measure long enough to, to, to span those immense, he was talking about million, million kilometers, millions upon millions and then billions. And wow, my little brain can't take it. So I hope you guys learned something from that as well. And I can see why Alice is into space, because there is a lot of fascinating facts to get your head around some of them at any rate. Right, we're going to continue our theme with planets today by reminding you that uh, we are also helping to support Islam for Deaf. It's a charity created to create, created to create resources for members of our community who may have hearing difficulties or special needs. They do videos, they do events, they do all sorts of amazing things. So if you do want to know more about Islam for Deaf, maybe somebody in your family has hearing difficulties or a friend or a colleague or someone that you know that has hearing difficulties and they want to understand Islam a bit better, then make sure they go to the website islamfordeaf.co.uk. Islam, F-O-R, not for number four, Islam for Deaf. .co.uk. Go over there, see what they've got, and if you can support them in any way you can, by all means, please do. I'm going to show you a video in keeping with our theme of Planet today. That is just an example of some of the work that they're doing in order to make Islam understandable to those members of our community that have the hearing difficulties. So guys, check out this video. When you get a chance, make sure you go to their website, inshallah. But in the meantime, check this video out, inshallah. The Muslim Kids Show! Asalaamu Alaikum kids! I hope you are all well. It looks like Sun Man is cleaning something in the kitchen. I wonder what it is. Shall we take a look? What are you up to today, Sun Man? Is that the telescope you're cleaning? Yup! I'm making sure it's nice and clean! I'm going to set up the telescope in the garden and take a look at the night sky. Ooh, hopefully we'll see the big, big, beautiful moon and some shiny stars. Um, could I help, please? If you'd like to, sis. I'm hoping to see all the planets through the telescope. Wowzers, how many planets are there? There are eight planets, sis, and I can name them all in order. <laughs> Ooh, what are they called? The first planet which is closest to the Sun is Mercury. Next, then it's Venus. And then, it's the planet that we live on, planet Earth. After Earth you have Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. The last two are Uranus and Neptune. How exciting! I hope we can see them all through the telescope. It might be a bit tricky as the planets are so far away. Right, the telescope is shiny and clean. Can you help me pop it in the garden, please, sis? <laughs> yep, mashallah. Thank you, sis. I think the telescope is all set up now. All we need to do is wait for the stars to come out. Oh, that was a bit quick, sis. <laughs> Can you remember which planet is first? I'll give you a clue. It's the planet closest to the sun. Mm, was it Mercury? That's right, sis. Mercury. Shall we see if we can find Mercury? Yes, yes. MashaAllah. Mm, oh, I think, yes, I found Mercury. Wow, MashaAllah. Would you like to have a look too? Yes, please then, man. Oh, wow. How beautiful. Look at the craters. Hello, Mercury. Would you like to try and find the next planet, sis? Mm, I'll try. The next planet after Mercury is Venus? That's right, sis. MashaAllah. Okay. Well, there's the moon. <laughs> Hello, moon. I think I've found Venus. Is Venus a milky yellow colour? That's right. I think you've found Venus, sis. Can I have a look, please? Yep, there you go, Sun Man. Did I find Venus? You did, sis. That is Venus. Did you know Venus is super hot? Venus is about 467 degrees Celsius. Wow, you would need to wear a lot of sunscreen on Venus. 
<laughs> so, which planet is next to find, sis? Well, the next planet is Earth, but Earth is our planet, so you can't look at Earth through the telescope. After Earth is Mars. Mars? Is it the red planet? That's right, sis. I think I've found it. Yup, Mars! Would you like to have a look? Yes, please, son, man. Oh, how beautiful! Mars is red as a rose. Did you know there are two robots on Mars? One is called Spirit and the other one is called Opportunity. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're there to do some science experiments and to take photos of Mars. Cool. Okay, sis. What planet is next after Mars? Um, Jupiter. That's right, sis. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. Oh, Jupiter should be easy to find then. Jupiter is very big, but it's also very, very, very far away from us. I found it. Would you like to look? Wow, how beautiful Jupiter looks all swirly-whirly. It is very swirly-whirly. The next planet is... Saturn? I know what Saturn looks like. Saturn has a big ring around it. That's right, sis. Can you find Saturn? Mm, I think I found Saturn. Sun Man, what's the ring around Saturn made of? The ring around Saturn is made up of tiny pieces and massive pieces of ice. A bit like an iceberg. Floating in space around Saturn. MashaAllah, Saturn is amazing. Okay, next is Uranus. Would you like to try and find it, Sun Man? It's okay, sis. You're doing really well at finding the planets. Have another go. What colour is Uranus? It's blue. Oh, your favourite colour, Sun Man. I found it. It's very beautiful. Would you like to look, Sun Man? Yes, please, sis. Wow, how cool. It is really blue like the bright blue sky. Okay, we've nearly found all the planets. There's one more left. Can you remember which planet is the last one, sis? Neptune? That's right, sis. Did you know that Neptune takes 165 Earth years to go around the sun? 165 years? No way. <laughs> yep, it really does. Oh, I found Neptune. So cool. Would you like to have a look, sis? Yes, then, man. Neptune is blue also. Oh, I do love looking at the planets. Allah's creation is amazing, mashallah. I'm going to draw a picture of all the planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. I can remember them all, said man. Well done, sis. Mashallah. Mashallah, Allah's creation is amazing. Salman and Aisha found all the planets with their telescope. Maybe you can have a look at the night sky and see what you see. Maybe the beautiful bright moon will be in the sky. It is written in the Quran in Surah 21, Ayah 33. It is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. All swim along, each in its rounded course. So you see kids, Allah created all of the wonderful planets. Maybe you can try and remember all of the planets too, just like Salman and Aisha. Well, until next time kids, Assalamu Alaikum. All right, then guys, hope you guys were watching that. Did you pick up when he said, Assalamu Alaikum? Assalamu Alaikum. Did you like that? And when he said, Hello, that one, I think it's hello, anyway, <laughs> assalamu alaikum now, I'm picking up slowly, I'm getting there, be patient with me, right guys, we're going to go for a quick break, but remember, we've still got the mind, brain, brain bursting competition, live calling competition coming up as well, remember that number, 0208-662-4550, it's coming up in a short while, guys, so I'm going to be going anyway, you do stand a chance of winning more of our amazing books here on our show, right guys, I'm going to go for a break, but if you want to nip out for a bit and come back don't be too long okay because we're gonna miss you we don't want to miss you so we see you in a couple of minutes take care assalamu alaikum